Good morning, everyone. Good morning, indeed. What a blessed Pentecost Sunday to be gathered together in such a beautiful setting. It is an absolutely gorgeous day, and it is good to be with you this morning. Those of you that don't know who I am, I'm Pastor Alan Scott, assistant pastor here, one of the plethora of assistants. I'll be leading you in worship. Pastor Phillips will be proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ on this Pentecost Sunday. It is good to be with you. I do have a, a few brief announcements I do want to mention to you. Uh, as we, as you came in this morning, uh, drove past our dutiful uh, ushers. They handed you a, a, a great deal of materials. Hopefully you have your drive-in uh, worship bulletin. On the back few pages also are the announcements. I encourage you, if you would, please to take a couple seconds sometime today so you know what's going on. Even with all the craziness going on, there's still an active congregation and lots of wonderful things happening, uh, and we want to pour, pour, point your attention to some of them. Of course, normally what we would do at this time is invite you to take a look at the worship registries, and I'm going to do that as well, but this time it's on a two-sided yellow insert. Please take a second, if you would, and fill out that worship registry so that we know who is uh, in worship today. You're going to be able to drop that off as you exit uh, our uh, property today. Uh, make sure you put that. You've got a place for you to put your offerings as well. That's going to be the same bin. Also for communion, you should have received, uh, for the number of individuals in your automobile, you should have received a uh, communion, uh, little communion uh, wafer and grape juice sets. Uh, and so if you'll take a look at those once, and, and we'll describe how that works when we, when we get there. There's, it's kind of a two-part two process, pulling back the top, a uh, little thin uh, plastic cellophane there off the top that protects the wafer, and then there's a little bit thicker piece of perhaps some aluminum or, or what kind of sealing uh, material there, but uh, nonetheless, uh, you're going to replace, once we, ha once we have received the body and blood of Christ, you're going to place those little cups back in the, uh, in the sealed envelopes or this, uh, the baggies, and you're going to be in place uh, also a little bin for you to place those on the way out. What I do want to mention too, we've uh, had a wonderful run uh, of a lot of success uh, and not having any fender benders. That, that was you know, one of our concerns, is that we didn't want to have all Geico or anybody else out here, whether or not to save you 15%, I don't know, but nonetheless, we want to make sure that everybody's fenders stay the same color that they came with. Uh, this morning. So watch your parking attendants, the ones in the uh, nicely uh, colored uh, and, and perhaps might be maybe even liturgically colored today, seeing as Pentecost, uh, uh, best to uh, point you in the right direction as you exit uh, our worship today. I do want to mention a couple of things that's going to happen today at 1230. Uh, Marty Bags uh, is doing a children's online uh, Sunday school. That's a lot of fun. The kids are having uh, some great fun with that. Uh, so we want to invite you and yours uh, to that. Look on page two uh, of your bulletin and there is a link for that so you can uh, become a part of that. We also too want to, I want to mention that we're going to hand out some materials on the way out uh, as well. Some materials that you will, uh, that children will need for uh, that Sunday school activity. So we'll hand those out to you uh, if you'll indicate you would like one, uh, let us know. We'll give that to you. It's not the only, the kids aren't the only ones having a, a study of the Word. Uh, we're also doing some adult uh, Bible study as well. Pastor Tobias continues on in his uh, Romans Bible study. I think he said this morning they're, they finally got to chapter uh, number number nine of Romans. So uh, that's going to be Wednesday night at 6 Yeah, <laughs> Honk, honk, right? <laughs> yeah, they got to chapter nine. Some folks are coming in person. We're doing uh, physical distancing inside the uh, sanctuary so we can spread out a little bit. Um, but if that is still a little adventurous for you, you can still participate. Uh, there is a Zoom link for that. We'll get you set up for that. And that link is on page number four uh, for that one. Speaking of Zooms and Bible studies, uh, the men group, we're finally going to get back together uh, for the month of June. Uh, we're going to have our uh, breakfast and study uh, at 7.30 uh, at the Southside location. Uh, and you can either participate either in person or Zoom as well. If you will let us know, we'll give you the link for that uh, if you would like to, uh, to participate uh, virtually. Uh, if you uh, don't, you want to just participate in person, uh, that's 7.30 sat next Saturday morning, uh, June the 6th. Wow, it's already June, isn't it? Uh, it feels like you, so you know, that's, a, that's a telltale sign for us. Um, also, next Saturday at 8 a.m., there's a youth service project. 
Uh, and if you haven't already replied to participate youth, we encourage you uh, to take a look at that. Uh, and so uh, that will be the sixth as well. That will be at eight o'clock. Are we meeting here first? We're we going straight to the straight to the location um, uh, for that. Uh, on uh, next set, and also this will well, and that's uh, that's south set location. You don't want to, okay. And that's pretty much it. All right, that's as far as uh, all announcements I think I have as far as the good of the community. Uh, so at this time, uh, we will greet one another. So we'll raise those hands and, uh, and wave hi to one another. You know, you're, you're close enough. You can roll down those windows and say hi to your neighbor. Uh, feel free to, to roll down windows, especially if you happen to have a last name with Peacock. You know, we want to, how you doing? There you, okay, there we go. Oh, that's, that's it. I'm going to give my daughter a hard time. Sorry, sweet All right, it is good to be with you this morning. Uh, as we begin, uh, we have a call to worship. Five o'clock. against you and 
thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake, forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, as you sent upon the disciples the promised gift of the Holy Spirit, look upon your church and open our hearts to the power of the Spirit. Kindle in us the fire of your love and strengthen our lives for service in your kingdom. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue now with first lesson. Tongues as a fire, distributed and resting on each one of them, and 
And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound, multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in his own language. And they were amazed and wondered, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus in Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians, we hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others, mocking, said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. For these men are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken by prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall see dreams. Yea, and on my men servants and my maid servants in those days, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I'll show wonders in the heaven above, and signs the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before the day of the Lord comes, the great and manifest day. And it shall be that whoever calls in the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the second lesson. Holy Gospel according to St. John, the seventh chapter. On the last day of the feast, the great day, Jesus stood up and proclaimed, If anyone thirst, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart shall flow rivers of living water. Now he said this about the Spirit, which those who believed in him were to receive, for as yet the Spirit had not been given. Because Jesus was not yet glorified. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we do give you thanks for the beauty of this day, for the beauty of creation, and for the gifts that you give us. And this day, especially the gift of your Holy Spirit. And we pray that you would open our ears to hear your word and then to know your will. And then by that same Spirit as we meet here, Give us strength to live it in the world. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. How many of you remember Pinky Promises? Yeah! Frankly, I'm not sure I really remember what some of mine were. I would assume they were things like, ooh, best friends forever. Or, you know, maybe keeping a secret. Oh, I think he promised that. And while I'm speaking in generalities, remember the day when a person's word meant something? Um, yeah, do that, a pinky promise or a good old-fashioned handshake, and you've got yourself a deal. The danger is, however, you can be legally bound by those actions, depending upon the situation. Nowadays, some lawyers are out there, and they're kept very busy either trying to find a loophole or close a loophole with certain types of agreements or promises. Because how does that saying go? Some promises are just meant to be broken. Well, that's a kingdom of this world saying, not a kingdom of God saying. One of the things I often say when I preach is, God says what he does and does what he says. Now, I know that sentence could be better constructed, but it's what came to me early on in my ministry and the study of the Word, and so I'll take it as a Holy Spirit gift, because God himself declares and reveals his faithfulness and challenges us when we doubt. I mean, just before the verse uh, in the Numbers text today, God himself says, Now you shall see whether what I say will happen to you or not. And he says this as he's talking to Moses about providing enough meat for Israel to eat after all their whining and complaining because that whole manna from the heavens ain't got a little hold for them. 
God said this after Moses was lamenting that his leadership stuff was just way too much for him. It was so bad, Moses said to God, well, if this is the way it is going to be, then just kill me here and now. He needed help. Boots on the ground kind of about too many issues, too many people, too much responsibility. I mean, we pastors think sometimes six, seven hundred members is a lot, but oops, uh, God bless, God bless Moses. Yet, what do we know about God's famous? I mean, can you maybe hear that speech that God gave him? I am the God who rescued you and brought you out of Egypt. I saved you as I parted the sea. I lead you by a pillar of cloud by day and fire by night. I bring manna from the heavens and give you water from stone. You are my people and I am your God. I mean, God didn't leave him out of Egypt to let them waste away and die. He promised to be with them and provide for them. He promised Moses, I will be with you. Well, in the end, yeah, they got their uh, bill of meat all right. And today's lesson, God responds to Moses' lamenting by providing the help he needs. Because God had a mission to accomplish and provides and equips his people with all that they need to accomplish that ministry. So yes, God says, he does and does what he says. You know, we put a lot of hope and trust in many things in this life, and some of it's really good. And some of it turns out to be not so good. We put a lot of hope and trust into people, or processes, or investments. Well, what about plans? Again, some of it good, some of it turns out not so good. Yeah, when it comes time to putting our hope and trust, our faith, our very lives in God and His Word, Romans 5, hope does not disappoint us. Because the love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Moses needed help, so God poured out the same Spirit that was on Moses upon 70 elders, and two of them were even present, revealing to us just how powerful that Spirit is, and how it cannot be contained for the sake of the kingdom work needing to be done. That same Spirit, the Spirit that danced and hovered over the waters of creation, it breathed life into dusty humanity. It blew over dry, dead bones and made them alive. That same spirit broke into a room like a mighty wind, filled it, placing tongues of fire on people, causing them to speak in their native tongue, and making completely sober people seem drunk. You see, Jesus told the disciples, Out from on high will come. <laughs> He told them, it's to your advantage that I go away, because if I don't go, the counselor cannot come. God promised an advocate and a counselor, but it wasn't just for them. The good news is, it is also for us, for it's the same Spirit that was poured out upon us in the waters of our holy baptism. The same Spirit that brought you here today. The same Spirit that allows you to speak his language of love and mercy and forgiveness wherever you go. Now we could have a little fun today. I remember in high school we had a cheer and we'd go banter back and forth and it went something like this. I have the spirit, yes I do. I have the spirit, how about you? And then everybody would yell back to me. Back and forth we would go until we had no voice left and well, you know, we're not as close to our neighbors as the south side location. We won't do that today because our neighbors will probably think we've been drinking too. <laughs> the events of Pentecost aren't a one dumb historical event. The Spirit came with power and purpose, revealing and exposing our brokenness and separation from God, convicting us of our sin, yet comforting us in our distress. 
It empowers us to live in the world, but not of the world, as we hope and trust in all of God's promises. It inspires us to reflect the kingdom of God through our words and our deeds. Remember what Moses said to Joshua? Oh, that all the Lord's people were prophets. Filled with the Spirit, God's people comes alive. We are the temples of the Holy Spirit. Brothers and sisters, take a look at yourself right now. Because all of that is the temple of the Holy Spirit. How our heart now flows rivers of living and life-giving water as we confess and proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord. Amen out there. Amen. That's right. It is what makes us appear different because we'll do things like build a ramp in the heat, right? We'll clean up someone's backyard. We'll travel 3,000 miles up twisty and uh, curved roads. We'll build for people all over the world. Or we'll make masks to protect one another from harm. We will pay for people we will never meet. We'll provide a food to someone who's hungry. We'll teach not just academics, but the faith to kids in our day school. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And that is God's people being, living, breathing, responding as God's people. Witnessing to His love and care over all that He has created. All that faith in action is possible because God said what He was going to do, and then He did. Providing us with Spirit so that we might know Him. And in knowing Him, have life. For nobody can say Jesus is Lord except by the power of the Holy Spirit. And what did we hear today? Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Have you ever considered how the Spirit is at work in you? Where is the Spirit leading you? I mean, that's the hard part, right? Sometimes it's so clear to us, like the rush of a mighty wind, or a burning bush, or a bolt of lightning, or maybe a stormy sea. And other times it takes us listening, oh, so intensely, for that still, small voice. It takes faith in believing, much like the Israelites, that God is still present and working just as He had promised. And while we wait for that clarity, with patience and persistence, we pray, Come, Holy Spirit, come. And then come some more. When you're done, come some more because we need you. We long for you. We, we thirst for you to comfort us and strengthen us, to guide and lead us, to heal us, to give us the words to say and ways to declare your mighty and faithful works. You know, there, there's no doubt there's a lot going on in the world today right now. I mean, I mean, you may feel restless like the Israelites wandering in the wilderness, just wondering, when will all of this end? With the virus, you know? The isolation, the uncertainty, the weariness. I mean, we've also seen horrible and deadly injustices being done to others. Broken promises within humanity itself because of sin at work. <sighs> we ourselves may be wrestling with all the twists and turns of the chaos of this life, and if not us, certainly some of you know. But thanks be God, He is not limited. He has given us His Spirit so that we might know His presence and be assured that He has not left us to waste away, which makes us not listen. Because we have the Spirit with us, in us, and lived out through us. Remember what Jesus said? Greater things will you do in my name. Woo! That is the power of the Holy Spirit at work in each of us. 
You see, God's promises are not about a, well, if he did this, then maybe he will do that. You know, leading us to question, wondering if he's going to toss us down a picky promise or a, a good old-fashioned handshake to seal the deal. It is perhaps better stated, since God has done I don't know, read scripture, all the stuff he's done in scripture, all that he has done through his son, then he will certainly be faithful in all that he has promised. For he loves us. He created us. He loves his creation. He is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow, saying what he will do and then doing it. And that is amazing good news for us. I pray that we are always open to the work of the Holy Spirit as it teaches us and leads and comforts us and assures us of God's presence in our life and His faithfulness in all things. I pray that for you and for me. In Jesus' name, Amen. Our hymn of the day can be found on page five, Spirit of Gentleness. <laughs>
creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come in to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, we do give you thanks for your faithfulness in all that you have said and done. We thank you that you have sent your Spirit, our Advocate and Counselor. And we pray for an abundant outpouring upon each of us. Come into our hearts. Come into our thoughts and the very core of our being. Come and lead us to places and people that need our witness to your saving and redeeming work. Inspire in us an awareness of your presence and a trust that you are with us. Create in us a thirst for you that never ends, but only draws us to your well, where you alone quench our thirst. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you speak to us in so many ways, but it is the gift of your Holy Spirit that gives us ears to hear and strength to serve. We pray for those who feel distance from you, who lack hope, who don't yet believe in your promises, who have not yet been able to hear you or experience you through the chaos of life. Strengthen us to be your prophets, your messengers, not just telling them, but showing them your love and compassion with all that you have created. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for those struggling in faith and life this day. For those suffering injustice at the hands of others, and for those who grieve because of it. For those so deeply affected by the virus, losing loved ones, losing employment, losing connections with others. May our prayers ascend to you, and may your spirit descend upon them, comforting them in their sorrow and strengthening them in faith in their time of darkness. Be with all of those who are in need of body or spirit, especially this when we lift up to you, Linda, and the Zio family, and the loss of Linda's father. We pray for those fighting and battling cancer and recovering. We pray for those wrestling with addictions, for those longing to know you and your presence. Be also with those who weigh heavily on our own hearts, as we name them before you now. In your hands, O oh God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abundant mercy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Peace. Now with the offertory prayer. Let us pray. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Signs of your gracious love. Receive them, the saint of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As we prepare uh, to receive the Lord's Supper, the little painting elements there. I'll peel at the, uh, the top a little bit, both of them. Kind of get started for yourself there. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. 
do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink. And this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Okay, go ahead and peel back the cellophane revealing the host and remove that. The body of Christ put in for you. Feel that the second layer there to reveal the blood of Christ. The blood of Christ shed for you. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you gave your Son both as a sacrifice for sin and a model of the godly life. Enable us to receive him always with thanksgiving and to conform our lives to his through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now may Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Our closing hymn, what about the first hymn? Except we're going to sing verses 3 and 4. God of tempest, God of whirlwind, verse 3 and 4.